All right, you guys are back with Armchair Engineer 85. First thing I want to point out before we get into the video is uh, right where the snowblower is sitting is where the 600 SDI used to sit. Um, I sold it recently. I think I may have mentioned that. Uh, I sold it for $3,300. It was a 2004 600 SDI. Uh, I fully rebuilt the engine. Um, yeah, it was just had a one plus one jump seat and a fuel caddy. It was, you know, really just a nice setup um, a snowmobile. And I ended up selling it for $3,300. Uh, that was my first uh, snowmobile project. Um, and the whole goal to that was I built it two years ago, had two years of fun with it, paid $1,600 uh, for it. And it came with a whole host of everything I needed to rebuild it. It, it was great, like the engine and a lot of extras. It was a great learning sled, uh, great learning project. Um, and like I said, I, I added the seat, I added a few extras. So I did the math quick and I probably, I made about $300 off it, which is pretty nice. Getting to drive a sled for two years, build it. Um, and you know, at the end of the day you sell it and you make $300. I know it's not a lot of money, but most people lose money on sleds. So this is where I'm at. And the whole point was I wanted to get this thing up and going. And once I knew it was uh, good and ready to go and everything checked out, it was time to sell it. And it sold fairly quick. And I got, um, I wanted to get 3,500 for it, but I took 30, 3,300, which was the highest offer I got for it. So anyways, tonight I want to share with you guys, if you want to start getting into projects like this, where you want to do what I did, buy a used sled, a non-runner, and get it up and going so you know potentially you can save a few bucks. This is what I've learned now doing two sleds. Um, some of this is going to be obvious, but I'm going to, if it sounds obvious, I'm gonna point that out and I'm gonna hammer it home as to why I'm mentioning it. So we're gonna get maybe a little more technical here tonight and it just, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll do them in bullet form. So the first thing you wanna do guys is you wanna decide what brand and what model you want. I knew I wanted this sled. I knew I wanted a 2015 800R XRS Renegade and in this color. It only comes in this year in this color or black. And um, I just, I love the color. I love the model year. You know, it was the first year of this uh, particular chassis with the XRS on it and it just came with a whole host of uh, great chassis upgrades the kyb the raz 2 suspension yada 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 i've mentioned it before the r motion rear and the looks are killer so i decided that and that's something you guys gotta do narrow it down it'll make it so much easier um, do your research and then you can go from there so the next thing you want to do is you want to establish what the market value is um, figure out, okay, this is approximately, if I were to buy this sled running, this is what it's worth, you know, and you, you'll get like usually a two to $3,000 window, um, unless somebody has, you know, stupid amounts of miles on it, or somebody has the opposite, they don't have a lot of miles on it, but then you can establish there. Um, the other thing that I want to mention is that you want to pick the time of year that you want to start looking for this and how you want to start looking for it. Uh, I always put a, an ad on Kijiji and I straight up, I put an ad up here uh, for this exact sled. Said I am looking for a 2015 Renegade XRS 800R non-running. It took six months before I finally got one reply. And it was the only reply I got. And then it took me another six months to basically wait to see if the guy was interested in selling it or if he was gonna fix it himself. So. You know about a year i wasn't in a big rush but i ended up getting a call or, or a, a message from the guy in january and that's to, you know i mean that's when people are riding that's when these things blow up they don't blow up in the summertime sitting in the garage they blow up when they're out being used so when i went and purchased it i knew from my last sled i the last sled i bought i ended up getting it at the end of september and then i wanted to get it out on the trail that year and i wasn't able to get it out till about the second week in january and i was lucky to do that because at one point i didn't think i was gonna I, you know i thought if i run into a snag here i'm gonna throw the whole season but i got lucky so when i went on to this one i knew okay i want to get this in the summertime because I really, really, really want to um, have lots of time, lots of research time, not feel rushed. And obviously in the summertime working in the garage, it's a lot nicer. Uh, you can have the door open and um, 
You can be in shorts and a t-shirt, not with a howling uh, propane heater in here. So that was the big thing that I had learned, and that's a thing. You want to time it. Um, the other thing is you get discounts on parts generally um, in the summertime. I ended up getting a top-end kit for very, uh, it was very affordable and very fair, like very discounted because it was the summertime. And they're just laying there on the shelves, and these parts guys go, okay, whatever. You know, I'll, I'll discount it two, three, maybe even $400. It's just the way it works. It's a win-win. Um, the other thing I want you to do is if you're buying this not non-running, um, I mean, you can buy these collision damaged. I, I don't know if I would go there um, because if the tunnel's all bent, well, then the, the sled's basically a write-off. But okay, if you're doing like me and you're buying it non-running, then, you know, obviously it's an engine-related issue. Unless the person just tells you, hey, I don't know, it cranks, but it won't, uh, it won't fire. But I haven't seen that yet. Usually the person goes, yeah, the, the, I blew the engine in Quebec last year. That's what happened to this sled right here. So, uh, you know, here's pictures of the pistons with holes in them. So, you know, okay, it at least needs a top end. So do your research. Um, I've been researching the 850 E-Tex because I think that's going to be my next project. And I've noticed that they are a lot more expensive than the 800R E-Tex. So I'm going to have to fact, if I end up getting one, I'm going to have to factor that into the price. So do your research. Um, and that's just the way it is. Um, now here's one that people are going to scoff at and say, yeah, no kidding. When, if you find one non-running, get it for as cheap as possible. Everybody says, well, no, duh. Who wants to pay more, um, you know, than you know, you want to obviously pay the least amount, but the reason why I'm saying this is, is it gives you a buffer room um, in the event, and you will, you will find other things wrong. If this, the, the market value for about this sled, the average and the lowest is about $7,500. If I would have bought this sled for about $5,000, which is what the original owner had originally wanted, um, I would have basically broke even. Um, I would have had this uh, sled assembled for about $7,500, which isn't a bad thing because it's like, okay, well, it's fair market value. If I ever needed to turn around and sell this today, I'm going to get, you know, fair market value for it. I'll get my money back. But you want to, you want to just, it gives you a buffer room for error in case you find other things broken. And I, like I said, you will. And it just gives you, okay, I've got, I've got a big, a higher ceiling now that I'm not going to lose my shirt on this because you could get into this and you end up spending more money on the sled than you, you know, that what's on the market. <clears throat> now I like working on sleds and I'm sure you guys do too. Um, and when you do a lot of this work, you know, you have a built-in reliability. If you've done it right, if you've taken the time, you know where everything is. If you, if you have a problem, you know generally where to start. So there is that added benefit, but you always want to, you know, get into this to save a bit of money. And yeah, so that's what I'm uh, getting at. Um, you Then when determine what else needs to be fixed. So when you're talking to the guy selling the sled, say, hey, uh, like, do you know uh, what else needs to be fixed on the sled? Like when I did, the guy had told me about the gas tank, the broken nipple, this broken nipple right here that I tried to replace. And he did tell me about that. And he said, you'll have to do something with that. Um, this was not, I actually broke this. This was another little broken nipple here on this um, uh, vacuum collector. Uh, basically it takes your vacuum from the bottom end of your engine and spits it out here on these two that send it around the backside of your engine. But uh, that one broke um, as well. But he had told me like, he said, well, the skis are destroyed because the carbides were destroyed. And my dad, he said, rode it and on just bare skis and ended up destroying the skis. So I knew, okay, I need new skis and carbides or, you know, finding skis with carbides. Um, it originally didn't come with these. Uh, these are the factory um, hand guards. I don't know why it didn't come with them or where they were, but maybe they broke. But I did know I needed that. So he was pretty straightforward. So I could do a quick calculation in my head and say, okay, well, like this is what I need. I, so I know it needs extra. I'm getting this for a fair deal. So I, I'm not going to be over. Um, the other thing, the flip side of that coin is what extras does it come with? Because both sleds that I bought have 
had extra things come with them, which is really, really nice. Um, this one came with a brand new primary clutch rebuild kit. I didn't know how much they were, but I looked them up and they were about $200, like about $150 to $200, even maybe a little more. So there was a cost savings right there. Um, this one, my first sled didn't come with a battery. So, but this one came with a battery, which was nice. Cause I said, okay, well that's easily $150 right there. Um, and I ended up taking uh, the battery that was out of the 600 SDI cause it was newer and I swapped it out with this one. It's, it's now in this one and I sold it with the 600 SDI. Uh, the guy gave me two great big jugs of two stroke oil. You know, those jugs are what, $60 each. Um, what else did he give me with this, uh, sled? Uh, it'll come to me obviously after the video is done. Uh, but yeah, it's, I mean, that's all added benefit as well that you can go, okay, well that's, that's, you know, that's an ace up my sleeve. That's money saved, you know, a dollar saves a dollar earned. So those are things, uh, that you guys want to take into consideration when you're doing these projects. Uh, so I'm just going to leave it there. Those are my tips. I think they were, there was about seven in total. I, um, like I said, it's, uh, some of this stuff is pretty straightforward. It's just once I, once you've done a few, like I said, I've done two now, I really have a good, uh, platform now to go on to do, especially to do my next sled. Um, and I'm going to tell you guys what my next project is going to be. And I don't know if it's going to be in the next year or two because I really want to ride this sled for quite a bit, for like a couple of years at least, get a lot of miles on it. But that doesn't mean I can't start looking. So the next sled that I want to buy is a 2020 Renegade 850 uh, XRS. Um, that is the Gen 4 chassis. This one right here is the Gen 3 chassis. It's got the new updated RAS 3 over the RAS 2 uh, front suspension still has the KYBs and it's got the R Motion 3. I believe this is the R Motion 2, I believe. Uh, rear suspension and then obviously it's got the brand new um, uh, 850 E Tech motor and it's just it's awesome. I love the color. It's a manta green, they call it. It reminds me just of this sled, like where they just had like a signature color and they just nailed it. It's kind of outlandish. So I'm going to start looking in the next year or two for one of those sleds same thing not running um the only other one that i might consider is the same year 2020 but it, a backcountry xrs it's got the longer track the longer rear skid the 146 um that year they came in like a red and white uh, a really nice design not quite as bright now outlandish as at, out i can't even say the word um, as the Manta green, but if I ever saw one of those and same thing, so that's kind of the one or two sleds that I'm considering. And, uh, I really hope that this helped you guys and, um, you know, best of luck to you. Um, if you have any questions or anything else that, uh, you know, you, you, you want me to answer, um, go right ahead. Uh, don't be scared of these sleds guys, especially Skidoo. They're not super hard to work on. Okay. I just thought of another tip that I totally forgot, and this is very important. And if you've managed this long, get the get the factory manual. I can't stress that enough. Both sleds that I've worked on, I managed to get the factory manual, and I found them online for free. But even if I couldn't find them online, I would still buy them. It tells you everything, every torque spec, every torque tightening sequence, when to use Loctite and when not to use Loctite, um, you know, uh, indexing, uh, things that have to be indexed, marks to look for, um, you know, engine tolerances and things that you have to look for when building an engine. Like it's, it's phenomenal. Like it, it tells you, you know, what fuel pressures that you should be running on your direct injectors. Like I can't stress it enough. So I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very much for watching guys. This is armchair engineer 85 like, comment and sub sub uh, subscribe. I'm out of here.